Um, I'm hoping my presentation will be a little different to everything that you've seen today. I, I'm, I'm guessing most of the guys I've been on have talked about trading systems and um, their trading methodologies. I want to bring things back to a kind of more research type of element. So I'm going to need you guys getting involved and you know answering my questions. So have your typing fingers ready, and uh, we're going to hopefully have a great presentation that is going to give you a bunch of ideas that you can take away and apply to your trading and hopefully profit from. So let me get my little pointer pen set up. That's good to go. Um, so there's the usual risk uh, disclaimer. So trading is risky, as I'm sure you guys know, and uh, past performance is not indicative of future results. So let me tell you uh, a little bit about us. Uh, we're a research provider. The website's called todetect.com. And uh, we, we provide research to traders in the institutional and professional space, as well as anyone that basically wants to purchase uh, our research from our website. Um, so we work with some fairly big name clients uh, and provide you know, the, their traders with our, uh, our research on a daily basis for all the markets that we cover. So now on to the main crux of today's presentation. What we're going to talk about is, uh, in part one at least, is probability. Now everyone here, if you've taken a trade or thought about a trade, in some way, shape or form, you have measured your probabilities. Right? You've weighed up that this setup that I'm using in conjunction with the markets doing is going to give me a certain amount of an edge. Now, what that makes you is a statistician, because when you're applying probability, you are essentially applying a statistical form of analysis to what you're doing. You might not realize it, but that's exactly what you're doing, because you're, you're looking for things that will give you an edge. You're looking for a strategy or a methodology that will give you an edge. Also you are a Jenga player. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys have come across Jenga. Give me some yeses in the chat if you have. If you heard of Jenga, it's a game where you kind of put little wooden blocks on top of each other and build a tower. Give me some yeses. So essentially, uh, I'll give you the quick premise of the game is to build, to build a tower that places a block where the tower falls over, that's the person that loses. But I applied this game to trading and probability in the, in the way that it works. Each block is something that I am doing in my methodology that is helping with my probability. It's helping to improve my edge. Now, as traders, we're essentially collecting these little slivers of probability. You know, it's the things you do, like your, your setup and little bits and pieces that you can do to improve your edge. You know, that's I, 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 what I hope what everyone that's here today is trying to do. You're trying to find little tidbits of information, little ideas that you can improve, uh, that you can apply to improve your age. So you're a statistician and you're a Jenga player. You're stacking probabilities. You're trying to make your own little probability tower. And what that makes you, instead of being a trader, you are, you are all jenga -sticians. All right, guys, you're jenga -sticians. So now when you get your business card made saying what you do and who you are, you are a jenga -stician. Um, because you're applying probability and you're trying to build this tower of, you know, this tower of, this edge tower which, which has all your probability stacked. Now, when you conceptualize a trade idea, essentially every single trade that you, when you think of it, you're starting off with an edge that's a coin source. So it's 50-50. The market can either go up or the market can go down. Now, the key thing for a trader is as soon as you pull the trigger, the edge falls away from you, right, due to spreads and, and a variety of different factors. Your goal as a trader is to bring the probabilities back in your favor. So guys, this is a question to everyone here. Um, please answer in the text chat. What adds probability to your trade? What can you as a trader do to add probability to your trade, to improve your edge? You know, to refine what you're doing, to give you more of an advantage in the marketplace. What can you as a trader do? So I'll give you some examples. It's, yep, absolutely, Michael's coming with the trade with the trend. Absolutely, you can trade with the trend. Most definitely, that will give you some form of advantage. So that's a block on a little Jenga puzzle. Um, you can apply patterns. Al, great one. Uh, use technical analysis. William coming in with that. You can limit losses. 
right? You can manage your risk and limit losses. Uh, Greg coming in support and resistance, absolutely Greg. Greg, you're right on the button there, you're right on the money. We'll follow on with that uh, a little later. Um, John, use momentum, absolutely. You can stick to your plan, as Richard just said. So there's a ton of things that you can do um, to, there's a ton of things that are available that you can apply to your trading methodology to improve your edge. But it's even little things that you wouldn't think of, like having a, an exercise routine, maintaining your health, um, all these types of things, the certain glasses that you wear, like I have um, special glasses called gunners that I wear when I'm trading, uh, which kind of help uh, me to focus on my screen a bit better and they you know, reduce the glare from the screen. Little things like this that you wouldn't necessarily think of that are not directly trading related can improve your edge because they improve the way that you can concentrate and focus as a trader. So it's all of the things that are related to trading and things beyond that as well, you know, your general lifestyle principles. So it's very important to think of trading in that way. You as a trader are trying to find little blocks of probability that you can add to your probability tower that can improve and refine your edge. Does that make sense, guys? Give me some yeses. Give me some whys in the chat to let me know that you're with me so far, that that's your goal as a trader, that you want to you know, find as many of these things to improve your edge, to improve your probability. Great stuff. All right, a ton of yeses coming through. Excellent. So. On to the main crux of today's presentation. Now, one of the most important things that I focus on as a trader to improve my edge is support and resistance. And I kind of go a little bit crazy on the support and resistance side of things, and I've uh, developed a methodology um, that I you know, think is incredibly powerful, and we have a ton of clients, hundreds if not thousands of clients, that use our research and attest to it. So, Essentially, what is support and resistance? So support and resistance is a technical interpretation of price based upon specific methodologies. And the definition I give might not be what you'll see in your trading encyclopedias, but this is how I look at it. These methods provide an indication of market dynamics in relation to supply and demand. And where supply overtakes demand, this is resistance. Where demand overtakes supply, this is support. So if we had a price chart, you know, when um, there's demand, 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 supply comes in, and that's essentially become our resistance area. And same thing with, uh, with the support side of things. You've got supply coming into the market, suddenly we get some demand, and that would be our support area. So you know, very simple stuff that I'm sure everyone here knows. Um, the supply and demand dynamic, it can be interpreted or predicted by methods that can be either proactive or reactive. Now, guys, these are two incredibly important words in my lexicon and the methodology that I apply, proactive and reactive, and they are going to form the fundamental basis of everything that we talk about today. So proactive and reactive. So what do I mean by these words? And let's, let's break those down. So proactive, reactive. On the proactive side of things, we have things like Fibonacci, calculated pivots, Elliott wave, moving averages, market profile, trend lines, this type of thing. These are numbers, support and resistance levels, information that is derived from what price did. They don't actually use the highs and lows. They don't define the highs and lows um, that you see in a price chart. They basically have a, a measurement or a mathematical form of analysis that gives you uh, another set of numbers based upon what the market actually did. Okay, guys, does that make sense? So these are pretty much mathematically derived pieces of information. Fibonacci, you've got your fib levels, um, you know, we're, that are based upon percentages, moving averages, that type of thing. Now, the flip side of that coin is reactive information. So you've got proactive and reactive. Reactive information is what the market actually did. Right? It's things like volume profile, high peaks and troughs in volume. It's price swing highs and lows. It's the initial balance, open gaps, open high, low, close. It, these are real numbers. These are the highs and lows of the market that you will see on your chart every single day. Is the distinction clear there, guys? Give me some yeses. Are you with me? So proactive on one side, reactive on the other. Right? It's a very key thing to think about when, as we go through this. So 
Proactive information is support and resistance information that's based upon predictive calculations that are derived from price and volume action. Reactive information is the flip side of the coin. It's support and resistance inf information that's based upon direct price and volume action. So it's what price and volume actually did. All right, everyone's with me. Great stuff. Lots of yeses coming through. Excellent to see. Okay, so now, now guys, we're going to move into. This is where you want to get your pens out and, and really focus on what we're doing. Um, and I'm going to break down the methodology that I employ and that I use uh, to put our research together that is used by a, a ton of traders from institutions to individuals uh, and I really hope that the ideas that I put forward will help you. There's a lot involved here um, but try and apply it to how you would look at the market and how um, you're you know, going to be adapting in the future. So the first part of what we do is called technical confluence. Uh, I don't know if you've come across that word, but technical confluence is essentially applying and putting together multiple support and resistance methodologies. So you're combining the proactive, which are the mathematically derived approaches, with the reactive uh, approaches, which are based upon what price and volume actually did. Actually did. And we're cross-referencing and comparing these methods to find high probability reversal areas. So guys, I'm going to break down. This is a gross simplification. Um, just to make the point and show you what I, what we're doing, um, it's very very simplified, but it, it'll, it'll give you some ideas as to how the method works and how we put our research together on a daily basis for all the markets that we cover. So let's start with part one. So the chart you see here um, is a is a I believe a 15 minute chart, and some of these blue lines probably won't make sense because they're from higher time frames, right? We look from you know the yearly, weekly, daily. Um, you know, all the way down. So we've drawn up some some of these major pricing highs and lows, which is what you'll see here. So we add these to our chart. So these are the key things we want to pay attention to on these uh, on these areas, these blue areas. Now, that's a, a reactive piece of information. We've added that. Now, what we're going to do is start throwing in some more information. We're going to start looking for uh, areas where multiple methods start coming together. So this is you know, a volume po profile information here in red, and these are major peaks and troughs in volume at, at these price points. So you'll see you know, some of these uh, are, are looking to coincide with the pricing highs and lows that we defined earlier on. So next into the mix, this is where things start getting a little bit spaghettified, is where we throw in the calculated pivots here in yellow. Now these are things like, I'm sure you've come across floor trader pivots and the Camarilla method and Woody's and all these types of things. I'm not interested in the individual pivot methods. What I'm looking for um, is pivot clusters. I'm looking for areas where multiple pivot methods are coming together. So like, this is a prime example. You've got quite a few pivots there. You've got quite a few pivot points from these different methods coming together and um, being co-located in one place. Okay, so you know we're we're moving down through the method now and getting more and more complex. But you'll start to see that there's some areas where these different methods are coming together. And why these different methods are important is because each one of these methods is essentially a market participant, right? It's the guys that use Elliott Wave. It's the guys that use Fibonacci. They're generally generally going to see the same things or approach the same levels. Um, so you've got the pink lines here, which are the Elliott wave areas that we're paying attention to, again, from multiple time frames. Um, we do something cool with Fibonacci. We're much the same with, as the calculated pivots. We look for cluster areas. We look for areas where multiple Fibonacci levels from you know, extensions uh, and retracements come together and form areas. So that's what you see here in green. Okay, so there's a bunch of other methods that we look at as well. Um, moving averages, a ton of other things, and basically what you're seeing here is the culmination of all of those. So guys, does this make sense? I know it looks like a ton of work, but is this making sense so far where you're looking essentially for areas where multiple methods come together? Give me some yeses. I want to see some more yeses. I need to know that everyone is with me so far. Right? This is, this is the ground floor. This is what Everyone needs to understand before we move on to the next phase of this. Okay, hell yes, coming through from Chris. Lots of yeses. Okay, great stuff. Excellent. So everyone's with me. All right, now, now we're gonna we're gonna move on to part two of 
of our of our of our research. So we've basically aligned the viewpoints of multiple market participants. Now we're going to throw in some you know really interesting analysis. Who here has heard of intermarket correlation? Give me some yeses, or if you haven't, say no. Okay, a ton of yeses coming through. A few yeses coming through. So you guys have heard of intermarket correlation. Intermarket correlation is something that I'm sometimes surprised that traders haven't used or come across. It, it's 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 just such an incredibly important concept in trading, and yeah. something that everyone needs to be aware of. What it what it essentially means is that markets are linked. They move together. They work together. Um, and there are certain correlations that can form and break over, you know, uh, you know, years and months and weeks. So we're in a global marketplace. We're in a digital marketplace where, you know, at a click of a mouse, um, you know, you can affect a trade, which can have an effect on other markets in the world. Um, so we analyze correlations across a basket of markets, and because markets tend to move in tandem and move together, and when you find things that are correlated, you want to be able to corroborate the areas that you're paying attention to with what's happening in that other market. So just to give you an example, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow, they share a correlation of over 85%. In some cases, it, and sometimes it can be over 90%. That's very powerful because you've got these three markets that are moving together, and if you've got a movement taking place that's affecting the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow, what's going to happen? That movement is likely to have a greater amount of momentum. Uh, you know, a bottom that's similar to a bottom on the Nasdaq and the S&P and the Dow is likely to offer some level of strength because it's as well as the market participants in the S&P, you've got the Nasdaq participants, you've got the Dow participants, all confirming each other. Right? You with me, guys? Is this making sense? This is kind of part two of what we do. So I've got a quiz for you in a second. There's a test coming up. So I need lots of yeses coming through. Okay, good stuff. So now, guys, here it, it's time for your quiz. It's time for your test. Now, everyone, I want you to pay attention, and we're going to do some intermarket correlation work. So what you see on the left and right, the, it, one of these charts is the S&P, one of the, the other one is the NASDAQ. Now, you're seeing, I've kind of cleaned these up a little bit just to kind of make the point, but what you're seeing are technical confluence areas. Okay, so what we did earlier on, these are kind of multiple methods coming together and the confluence areas that we're paying attention to. So I want you guys to help me make some pairings. Which of these confluence areas are comparable comparable to the confluence areas of the other markets? So is it one in B, three in C, you know, two in E? Give me some pairings. What markets are coming together? What markets are working in correlation with each other, where are the, the relationships that you see there? Okay, so straight in Rubin, uh, with 1 and A, absolutely, 2 and B, great stuff, so lots of you guys chiming, excellent, and 3 and D, absolutely. So what you've done now is you've got your technical confluence, which is multiple methods coming together, you know, the pinks and the greens and the reds that we see there. And now we're corroborating that information with another market. And what that helps us to do is eliminate one of these other confluence areas. It helps us to eliminate some of these other areas. Because what we don't want is a chart full of lines. Right? If you've got a chart full of lines, you can, you can call the high uh, of the market every single day. You know, if your chart's completely covered in lines. We want to sift things away. We want to get rid of some of these areas. We want to focus on the most highest probability areas, and this is this intermarket correlation element is essentially allowing us to do that. It's allowing us to focus on key areas that are important on other in other markets that are highly correlated with the market that we're trading. Give me some yeses, guys, if you're with me. Does that make sense? Where well, you're combining technical confluence as part one, part two. You've got intermarket correlation where you've got these highly correlated markets and you're looking for corroboration of the levels that are there. Great. Tons of yeses coming through. Excellent stuff. So we've gone through part two of the research that we do. Now, guys, this is probably the most difficult uh, to understand. 
but the most interesting part of the research that we do, and I think it applies to way more beyond than just support and resistance, right? It's, it's how you perceive and look at the market. So, this is what we're going to start with, and I'm going to, I'm going to break this down for you. As we know, uh, as I'm sure everyone here knows, most of you guys should be familiar with this diagram. This is essentially how the market moves and how supply and demand and this type of thing works in the market. The market goes through various phases, right? It goes through accumulation and markup, distribution, markdown, and back into accumulation. This describes the waves and the phases of the market, and th this type of diagram is true across all time, time frames. What I found in my research is that there is no trading methodology, there is no analysis method that consistently works in every market environment. I've just not found anything. Right? The, the only thing that works is inside information, <laughs> if you can get that. There is nothing that consistently works, and that explains the frustration that I'm sure many of you guys, myself included, have had where you've developed this methodology, you know, you're sim trading it and it's working so great and everything, you know, you're doing so well and you're thinking about the yacht you're going to buy and all the things that you want to do and then you start training that method live and it goes well for a couple of weeks and then suddenly things fall apart. Now, real money might be something to do with that, but one of the big reasons is that the market has changed the phase has changed and that technology is not relevant to the market anymore and guys if you think about it if you think about it um, think of these last 10 years what an incredibly schizophrenic market we've had I mean if any of you guys were around trading in 2004, 2005, 2006 it was just slow and the S&P was like really tiny moves and then suddenly the crisis hit and you were seeing 10 point one minute candles on the S&P uh, and since then we've gone through various different phases and this is the key thing what I've found is nothing works there is no Elliott wave no Fibonacci no none of this stuff works none of this stuff works consistently across all market environments what does work is using the right methodologies in the right environments. So what I've found is that say you're in an accumulation type of environment that you know volume profile might work incredibly well, better than say FIBS or some of these other methodologies. And in a markup environment, Fibonacci might start edging ahead. And some of these other methods might start edging ahead. It might become a more proactive uh, environment. Now, because of that, I, uh, I and we, uh, to the tick, we statistically weight each of these methods based upon the market personality. And what I mean by that is, essentially, you're giving them a rating of 1 to 10. That's the layman's way of describing it. Obviously, that's not the measure we use, but that's the best way to describe it. Each of these methods has a weighting. So you might find in, you know, in one environment that volume profile is a 10. It's the most powerful thing, and moving averages are a 1. And if you've got an area that has moving averages and you know it has six different methods, but they're all the lowest weighted methods, so you've got an area here that's got you know a ton of different methods confirming it, an area here that's just got you know two solitary methods, but these two solitary methods are the most powerful and statistically viable methods in that market environment. So this might be volume profile and pricing highs and lows. This might, these two might be the most powerful in an accumulation environment. What we would do is focus on this confluence area rather than this confluence area. And you know, we do this across multiple market market phrases like you know the bullish environment, bearish environment, trending environment, ranging environment. You know, all of these market environments have different personalities, and personalities work in much the same way that a, a person's personality is. So, you know, if someone's happy, they tend to laugh and they uh, tend to, you know, be fun to be around and, you know, all the things that would define someone that is a happy personality. The market is much the same. There are measures and gauges of the market that give us an indication of what phase we're in, how the market's feeling, the market's personality, and we're talking about things like 
volume, you know, the daily range, uh, you know, ATRs, internal market gauges like the PIC, the TRIM, the VIX, all these types of things and different levels on those things give us an indication of how the market is, you know, quote unquote, feeling. And the way that the market's feeling is what we use to define what methods work in any given environment. Does that, does that make sense, guys? I know that's kind of out there. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a wacky idea. Um, but it's just what I found. It's just what I found uh, in, in my research. Give me some yeses if you're with me. So just to, just to kind of summarize that while you're chiming in with your yeses, um, is that you know, market sync is essentially what we call this. Um, we analyze a lot of market variants, including volume, daily ranges, internal market gauges like the tick and the trend and all these types of things to analyze the personality of the market and where the market is and how it's feeling. You know, because you, the way you've got to think of the market is, is it's a collection of, well, there's some machines, a lot of machines kicking in now, but it's, it's, it's human psychology. You know, and you, know, you can measure a person's personality, you can measure a market's personality. It's a lot, Richard, Richard came in with a very good point, the market is alive, right? You, you can measure the fear and the greed, Greg, get, uh, gr you guys are doing the presentation for me now. <laughs> so there's, there's some really good comments coming in. I, I don't know if you can see the comments, but hopefully you can. Um, so the, it's all about evolution. The market is schizophrenic, as Michael just said. It's, it's all about evolution. It's about adapting to the market. That's the key thing. Always being open to new ideas, new trading methodologies to add that sliver of probability to what you do. Right? That's how you've got to look at it. Anytime you, know, you analyze a, a, a trading system or um, a piece of research, the way you've got to think of it, will this benefit what I do right now? Will this benefit my methodology? So once we've done, gone through all these three phases of you know, technical confluence, intermarket correlation, and the market sync, which is the stats work that we do, we end up with these bright red zones that we call the power zones. This is, this is what our research culminates in, and this is what ends up on a, on a trader's chart that they can analyze and then use. So, we're gonna, we're gonna, so that's the research. Now, this is a very important question, and I want you guys to keep you know, fingers at the ready on your keyboards. What is your setup? What do you guys look for in a trade? What are you using right now to pull the trigger when you trade? Please type it in. You know, I want you guys to throw your ideas at me, and we can go through some uh, ideas and throw, throw some things around. So what method are you using right now in your trading methodology? What are you employing right now to do what you do you know, in, in your current method? Now, the reason why I ask it, this is we've been talking at the start of this presentation. I spoke about how you kind of want to keep building this probability tower. Now, your support and resistance research is one part of this tower, right? It's, it's, uh, it's, I, I would say it's more than one block. It's quite a few of the blocks. But your setup is another part of this. Now, the reason why you're using the setups that you're using is because you have the perception of some type of edge based upon the environment that you're in right now and what you're doing right now. So, oh, we've got a ton of... Uh, Answers coming through, uh, squeezes, Kettler channels, and Bollinger bands. Michael, that's good stuff. Um, uh, market reversals with wave A and B, patterns, candles, fibs, you know, uh, uptrend, serious uptrend, signals. Oh yes, Michael again. Yeah, thanks, mate. <laughs> volume profile, gap reversals, volume, price combination of technical indicators, MA trend lines. Okay, ton of ton of stuff coming through. So is it? ton of methodologies that you employ. So support and resistance levels essentially can be used with everything that you've just described there, right? Emit MACDs and volume and uh, whatever you're using as your setup, whatever you're using as your definition to pull the trigger, you can apply support and resistance research to, you know, the, hopefully some of the stuff that we've gone through and apply it to your own methodologies to refine your probability and your edge that little bit further. Right? That's what you're going for. You want a, a little sliver of probability in your favor. So I'm just going to go through a few quick examples. Um, and guys, this is not how I personally trade. I focus on order flow, and that's what I, what I focus on. But I, I just want to illustrate how versatile 
a focus on support and resistance research is. You can apply it to pretty much any setup. You know, whatever it is that you're doing, you can apply this. We've got an example here of uh, divergences and crossovers. I think this is a stochastics. I'm not sure, but I think it's a stochastics where you've got the market making higher highs and the stochastics indicator making lower highs, which is a setup, and it's coincided with a major resistance area. So you've got setup, a big sliver of probability, so resistance area, another sliver of probability. Boom, the market then you know is moving down. So another example here, uh, stochastics making higher highs, market making lower highs, uh, sorry, lower lows, and that's a signal for you to trade. So you're essentially trying to combine support and resistance research with your setup. Does that make sense, guys? Are you with me? So there's some there's some there's some other there's some things that you can throw in here and keep keep typing away. I'm gonna run through this stuff and you know we can throw in the questions and keep keep the conversation flowing. So you've got a resistance area here, you've got a moving average crossover, markets hit that area, moving average crossover, you look for a sell-off on the way down. But the great thing is is that using these levels you're limiting the number of areas in which you look for a trade. You're focusing on high probability areas. You know, you wouldn't focus on this mishmash crossover here. You wouldn't you would avoid the mishmash crossovers over here. It would help you focus on key areas that have the highest probability. Right? It doesn't mean they're all going to work. By no means does it mean that. But you know that based upon the market's historical performance and the adaptive edge that you've created through the stats work that you've got this edge that is likely to continue into the future. That's the key thing. It's all about the likelihood of co continuity into the future. So here's some RSI divergence extremes. So you've got RSI here getting lower highs, market making higher highs, coinciding with the resistance area, and you know, you've got this coming together. Michael, you're a very smart man. Um, so then you've got a, a ton of, you know, you've got it bouncing off this low support area here as well. So, you know, there's a ton of methods that you can employ. There's a ton of ways that you can look at the market. Bollinger Band, the key thing is, guys, one thing I focus on is looking for extremes, right? So Bollinger Bands are quite good in that way. It, you know, you, they help you find market extremes. <clears throat> A statistically significant extreme, and once you've got the band, you know the market outside the bands coinciding with the resistance area, it makes sense. So, guys, like I said, this is not how I personally trade. I just wanted to give a diverse range of examples that show the power of how you can use support and resistance research and how you can apply it to your trading. Right? Is that is that making sense? Is that something that you think would be beneficial to what you guys do right now? Give me some yeses, let me know. So why does this type of research, why does this power zone research work? Why does it make sense? So the number one, technical confluence. Right? Technical confluence is the key. So you're combining multiple forms of technical analysis, you're combining multiple market participants together in the same place. And you know, we, we often talk about patterns and why do patterns work? Why does a head and shoulders pattern work? What does it mean? And a lot of people um, think that it's because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. A lot of people recognize and see that pattern, and when they recognize and see it, they all jump in and uh, on the break of the shoulder, and everyone joins in. But we don't care, self-fulfilling prophecy or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is that is there a statistically significant edge? Are enough market participants going to coincide in that market at the same time to help us refine our edge? That's what matters. That's the key, right? And you know, let's just—I'm just reading through some of the comments you're making. Greg, I'm not sure what you mean. You said if you use volume, then have you added that to your methodology? Volume is one of the most important aspects of the work I do. Volume, order flow, order flow is is a big, big deal for me. It's it's you know to the point where I'm breaking down individual contracts and this type. Of, I I do a lot of order flow work, a lot of order flow work. So then you've got intermarket correlation, which is you know. 
different markets, correlated markets, how they interrelate, how they correspond and work with each other. Um, and you tie that all together with market sync, which is your statistical edge where you're weighting these different methodologies and you're putting it all together. And that's essentially why the research works. And the key thing is this, guys. I, I said something fairly controversial in the middle of this presentation, which is that nothing works. There's no system, no methodology that consistently works. The key thing is the ability to evolve. The key thing is the ability to adapt to what the market is doing, how the market is flowing, what's changing in the market, and how, you know, and how the market is evolving and changing. And the key thing this brings to the table is psychology, technical confidence, and market, you know, market sync. You know, the our st stats approach it boosts your confidence because you know the work that's gone into that type of trading. You're much more focused because you're focusing on key areas, right? You're only going to trade when the market hits that type of area or close to that area. That's where you're going to focus on your setup. That's where you're going to focus on what you're doing. And importantly, this is the big one. It's huge. I'm going to circle it, underline it, add a full stop at the end of it. Avoid overtrading. Um, I think the, the, the gentleman that spoke just before me talked about efficiency, right? And he, he was spot on. Efficiency is about avoiding overtrading. It's, it's about getting in the most highest probability trade to give you the greatest possible edge. It's key. It's very, very important to avoid overtrading. Now, if you've got high probability areas that you're focusing on, you're going to avoid overtrading. You're going to, because you, you won't trade anywhere else. So guys, uh, I'm at the point where I'm going to start wrapping things up. These are the 25 different markets that we cover, um, and you know you can do like I've basically given you a breakdown of the methodology that we employ. You can take it away, try it all yourself, or you can hopefully have us do it for you. And uh, I'm going to give you a nice little uh, offer, incentive to hopefully for you guys to do that. So we cover all of these features: the S&P, Nasdaq, Dow, Gold, Crude, Russell. Uh, the euro, all of these, and guys, if you've got questions, it's a good time to kind of ask now, so by all means, start asking your questions, and we can talk some more. Um, we, we provide all of these, we cover all these 25 markets, we provide indicators for all of these different platforms, TradeStation, eSignal, NinjaTrader, MT4, Multichart, Sierra, Ensign, InvestorRT, MarketDelta, ThinkOrSwim, that will that will plot our research, our power zone research directly on your charts. Um, what we also do is provide a data sheet for each of these markets that have the power zones confluence uh, information. It has a ton of other things like cot index bias and uh, intermarket correlation work, um, indicator biases, indicator biases. Um, and Fibonacci clusters, and there's a ton of stuff that goes into the sheet, and it, it's basically like a roadmap for the market. You know, the key thing to focus on, of course, is the confluence power zones. But because we work with a lot of institutional guys, they like to have a sheet that has you know the news and everything else in it uh, as well for them to focus on. So <clears throat> what we do is provide 25 different markets, all the markets you see here. Uh, we provide an indicators for all of these different platforms that will plot the research onto your chart, completely automated. And we provide a data sheet with a ton of great stuff on it. So our research is normally $99 a month. So essentially that's 20 cents a day for a single instrument, um, which I'm sure you guys will agree is a great price. So you get everything, all 25 instruments for $99 a month. It's a lot more. Um, on the institutional side, but that's what you get there. Um, and we've got a, a nice little offer that we're setting up for you guys today. If you were to purchase six months of our research, it would cost you $594, which is incredibly reasonable for a six month subscription, six months of access. But today, we're going to give you 50% off and a seven day free trial. So, no one, if you decide to sign up, no one will, uh, if you decide to sign up, no one will be charged today, you've got seven days to try it out, and you will get, uh, you will have this for 297 for six months of access to all of the 25 markets that we cover. Uh, the offer can be found at tothetick.com forward slash trader, so you get 25 different markets, FX futures, you get all of our indicators for 
um, a ton of different markets, and you get all the data sheets. And Michael, you the man. <laughs> Michael made a prediction, and uh, he was spot on. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go through some of these questions. So, guys, 50% off a six-month subscription. So that's six whole months, six whole months at 297 for all of the markets that we cover. And you've got them all in one place. You can plot the research on your charts. You've got all the data sheets. You've got everything. There's no promo code. All you need to go is to this URL, T-O-T-H-E, to the tick, dot com forward slash trader. And guys, what do you think of our name? Don't you think I've just nailed it as a support and resistance research provider with to the tick, dot com? <laughs> okay. All right, so let's have a look at some of these questions. Genesis Trade Navigator. Now, Stu, that's a good question. Genesis have made an indicator for us, but we don't have it just yet. They have made it, but we don't have it just yet. And there are some platforms that we don't cover, like CQG is something we're working on, but we just can't find a developer for. And guys that use CQG just use the data sheet. So you have the data. You know, all you have to do is kind of draw on a couple of lines. The key thing is the research. You know, it's... Um, it's uh, that's the key thing, Michael. You're making me laugh. What are you doing? <laughs> okay, you've got some funny guys in here. <laughs> okay, so let me see. Uh, Non-US citizens, are, yeah, citizens, yeah. Um, Toss is a, a US-only platform, um, so yeah, there, there is there is Toss. We've got Thinkorswim as well, Steve. Uh, think also in the sandbox. Our research goes to a server, and then the indicator downloads it. So th the think or swim way of putting the, our research on your chart—it's a little bit more arduous. As in, you've got to download the indicator from our members area and put it on your chart every single day. But it, we do have it for think or swim. And so to the tick.com forward slash trader uh, to get that offer. Seven days free, guys. No one is charged today. Seven days completely free. Try the research out. See if it's for you. Uh, complain. Email me, tell me how terrible it is, do, it, do whatever you want. It's not terrible, but you can do that. Um, let me just go through. So these are the, all the markets we cover, all 25 of them, and these are all the indicators. So Thinkorswim, Market Delta, Investorati, NCN, TradeStation, eSignal, NinjaTrader, MT4, Sierra, Multicharts. There's a ton there. So let's have a look at some more of these questions. Uh, Robert, any ETS? We do have plans to expand our range because you know users love our research, um, and there are some ETFs that are on the horizons, uh, including individual stocks as well. So we've got a we've got a bunch of stuff on the way. Oh, uh, Chris, sorry, I missed your question. How important is keeping an objective perspective when you enter and exit a, a trade? Um, if I understand your question correctly, it's incredibly important. It's, you know, you've got a, every trade is a scalp until it proves itself, right? So you can have all the probability in your favor, um, you know, in, in a million different ways, but you don't know what, what's taking place in the market until it happens. Oh, I think I'm almost out of time. Uh, so guys, there's a ton of questions that I that I come through, and I'm I'm kind of missing them. If you've got any more questions, feel free to send me an email, uh, amar at to the tick dot com. So double a m a r at to the tick dot com, and um, you know I'll be happy to answer anything else that you want to ask. But seven day free trial, to the tick dot com forward slash trader. Sign up. What have you got to lose? 